from the past. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker. I call Andrew Bailey. Oh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Good choice. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be talking on this um, amendment that the uh, Honourable Jerry Brown has proposed, which is uh, to extend the report date from the 20th of February to the 19th of April to re reflect reality, I think, Madam Speaker. Because I think um, the first thing I'd like to talk about before I talk about um, a number of specific issues relating to this is uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge uh, Honourable Eugenie Sage from the Greens for actually having the courage to stand up and put forward the Green order, view. Order, you, can't, you can't talk about members having courage or, or lack of courage. For talking about the bill. Yep. And I've got to say that uh, I just want to compliment her for taking that step because I think it's important that the Greens are on record. But from what I uh, recall from the conversation just before tea break was that uh, Honourable uh, Eugenie Sage was saying that whilst uh, the, the Greens' view was that the uh, whole issue is important and should be taken through to uh, as quickly as possible, the big issue I have with that is that we have heard from the Greens many, many times, even in this parliament, the 52nd parliament, around the issue of transparency and openness. And I think that just cuts across that whole principle. And I think that's a very important principle that we're talking about tonight. And at least Eugenie Sage uh, was upfront about it and clear that she thought that we should be cutting across that principle. But the thing I find perhaps um, of all more concern were the early conversations regarding this bill by the Honourable Shane Jones. And he started out uh, by making a uh, statement. I'm just reading from the Hansard here. Now, when the bill goes to the Select Committee, no doubt people will endeavour to change some of the provisions. Some might say they're too restrictive. Some should say we should let the Aussies enjoy the privilege that we ordinary Ki Kiwis have. That, is all, that will all be teased out through the Select Committee. So, on principle, that sounds fine. But, Madam Speaker, the bit I find very offensive, particularly as being a member of the Select Committee that will be listening to this, uh, in bill in due course, is that he went on to say, I say to the other side of the House, and uh, um, this is my side where I'm speaking from, as they look for people who will continue to find reasons to oppose this bill, which will actually, because of arithmetic and coalition agreement, pass irrespective of what select committee it goes to irrespective of what mischief members of that select committee might get up to. Madam Speaker, I think that cuts across the whole principle of the workings of a select committee. And no doubt the Honourable Minister who has proposed this bill, this investment uh, bill, will want to make sure that this select committee takes the time to actually go through some of the provisions of this bill in detail to make sure that the Act, when it uh, is passed, is in the best form it should be. Now, of course, we are talking about um, Speaker's Ruling uh, 109, um, which says basically that uh, if, this, um, if we truncate the select committee process, we should be um, moving forward as quickly as possible. That's uh, sorry, 102, uh, subsection 7, Madam Speaker. My issue with this, if you want to truncate bills, uh, you've got to have very good reason, of course. But the biggest thing about this bill, it is a very complex bill. And I just wanted to uh, highlight just a couple of issues with that regard. The first one... As long I as you do that in relationship to the timing yeah, of the Yeah, it's in relation committee. to the timing. Yeah. And this is why I just want to highlight some of these issues, Madam Speaker, because this is why I think this does need due time. The first thing is I talked about the process for how this bill is going to be operating. One is around the definition of lifestyle blocks and retail block, uh, residential blocks and the lack of clarity around that definition and what that may mean in terms of how foreign buyers uh, may want to use those provisions to get around the, the elements of this bill. The second one was around the process for people making OIO applications. I did take the House through some of the process for that. Very convoluted, very long, and again, the timing around that and the complexity and the obligations on the OIO um, is one of the considerations that the Select Committee is going to have to take into account in terms of the workability of this bill. And that is another area of complexity. 
The third area is um, the liability of conveyances, how they are defined and the groups of people involved in that. And the fourth was the definition of the mandatory conditions, and particularly around the definition of development land, which in my view, Madam Speaker, when you look at it, it the definition around development land, I think, will, will be a potential area of great deal of dispute uh, and submissions from a uh, number of parties, because if you want to be a foreign buyer and you want to develop land and buy land in New Zealand, you will buy it and use the definition in a way that you may say you're going to pull down a building, but you've got no time con commitments around it. And I think that is perhaps a wedge that many foreign buyers. So if we're going to do good, if we're going to do good. Um, Point of order, uh, Duncan. Of the bill, not yes. the motion. Yes, that's fine, but that is certainly the, in the Speaker's prerogative to judge that. I thank the member for his assistance, and I would appreciate it if the member comes to the, the substance of the motion, which is about the time that the bill will be in the Select Committee. Okay, so the reason why I'm highlighting those four issues is that if you start to look at who might have an input into that, and who might want to come and see the Committee uh, and make uh, proper representations. I think you can start to go through them. There will no doubt be accountants. There will no doubt be lawyers. There will no doubt be financial advisors. There will no doubt be real estate agents. There will be no doubt immigration consultants. And there will no doubt be banking, banking uh, representatives, because they will be funding some of this. And the, and the seventh will be fund managers. And I think, Madam Speaker, if you start to work through how many submissions you might get in each of those areas... I, I won't be working. Sorry. Uh, Madam Speaker, if, you st if people start, sit down and actually work out how many potential submissions you might, um, people, the committee might receive in these specific, from these specific groups, that adds up to a considerable number of uh, meetings where the Select Committee are going to have to listen to very technical, uh, detailed submissions. And I just put it to you, Madam Speaker, that alone justifies why the Select Committee needs proper time to consider these complex I issues. Now, the other one, I just want to um, go to Standing Order 195, which is um, the chairperson of a Select Committee may, on behalf of the committee, request any person to attend and give evidence before the committee. And I think, again, by pushing this through in such a short period of time, Madam Speaker, that is cutting across the right of a committee, the Finance and Select Committee, to actually operate in an effective manner. And I put it to you, Madam Speaker, that alone uh, is one of the most serious issues with the requirement to bring this all forward um, well, in, uh, well before what would otherwise be a normal um, length of period to hear complex arguments. And I think um, we will, as a committee, no doubt be wanting to get some independent input uh, particularly around um, the legal aspects from some of the government advisers, as well as some of the financial aspects. And I think, Madam Speaker, that will all come to pass, and to be pushing that through in the, uh, late January, early February, will be very, very difficult, and actually uh, will lead to a piece of legislation that I don't think it will be in the best interests of New Zealanders. Now, the other thing uh, with regard to the Chair having the right to call people is one around the sense of equity about better public engagement. And I think we, uh, the, even if you accept the uh, proposition that the professionals can get back from their holiday, prepare adequate submissions, give uh, the committee the time to uh, review those properly, hear from advisers, the issue is about the wider public engagement, Madam Speaker. And I just think that this is a very, very important issue. There will be a lot of public interest in this. And during the course of January, no one will be focused on this. And I think, Madam Speaker, we need to be in a position where the public can have significant input on this matter. And I, I, would, just, I, I would just put it to you, Madam Speaker, that, that not only is that in the public interest, but actually is about good government. And I think uh, being a member of that select committee, I'm no doubt all of us, and with diligent uh, members from both sides of the House on that committee, that we will want to take the time to make sure we are hearing all the evidence and uh, advice from the people properly um, uh, who have a proper interest in this aspect. And so, Madam Speaker, I just would like to resubmit that I don't believe that this is in the best interest of the, of the House. I fully support 
the amendment by the Honourable Jerry Brownlee that this um, report date be uh, delayed or deferred from the 20th of February to the 19th of April. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, Madam I Speaker, call Madam Speaker, Karen Madam Speaker. I move that the question be now put. Jamie Lewis. Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for the opportunity to speak um, in this debate. I'm, I'm glad you've been waiting for it, Ruth Dyson.